In difficult days and facing dire circumstances, it is always good to remind ourselves that God is greater than all. Scott Pauley is examining the miracles of Jesus recorded for us in God's Word. Our hope is that the message in these miracles will become real in your life. Christ is enough. Let's open our Bibles and join the study now. What a study we've had in the miracles of Jesus. And today we come to the last miracle he performed at the end of his 33 and a half year life on earth, at the end of his ministry. Uh, What was that miracle? And the answer is his own ascension. Again, the miracle centers in his person. Again, the miracle draws all attention to the Lord Jesus Christ and the sufficiency of Christ. I want you to find two places in your Bible today. I want you to find the last verses of the gospel according to Luke and the opening verses of the book of Acts. And now, if you know much about these two books, you know that the same man under inspiration of the Holy Spirit wrote them. So Dr. Luke writes two books, Luke and Acts. He writes both of them to a man by the name of Theophilus uh, to try to instruct him in who Christ is and the fact that the Lord's work continues to this present day. But he ends Luke with the ascension, and he begins Acts with the ascension. And it gives us a beautiful glimpse of our ascended Lord. You know, we talk a great deal about the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, and rightly we should. That's the essence of the gospel. But I think we need to make more of the ascension of Christ. And I hope when we're done today, you'll see what a miracle this is and what it means to us now. Luke chapter 24, verse number 50 says, And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven, and they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and we're continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. And then in Acts 1, he gives just a little more details on that particular account. Acts chapter 1, verse number 9, And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. You know, the ascension of Christ has has past implications uh, historically. It has present implications uh, just for where we're living today, and it has future implications for what we're looking forward to. You see, this, this final miracle of our Lord Jesus is like the divine exclamation point, but it's also... Uh, the miracle that reminds us there is more to come. Oswald Chambers said that the ascension was just the completion of the transfiguration. I like that. Uh, They were given a little glimpse, just a glimmer of his glory, Uh, but at the ascension, oh, they got a a full view of the glory of Christ as he ascends. Think of this. When Jesus told his disciples that he was going to leave them, remember throughout his ministry he kept telling them he's going to suffer, he's going to leave them. He's going away. Every time he told them, they were sad. They were sad, they were sad, they were sad. And we understand that. But when he actually leaves, on the day he actually leaves, they're filled with joy. Go figure that one. He actually ascends and departs from them. And the Bible says they come back to Jerusalem with great joy. In fact, there are three things produced. There's worship, there's joy, and there's praise. They worshiped him. They returned with great joy, and they were continuing the temple, praising and blessing God. So you tell me how his departure brings worship, joy, and praise. And the answer is, they understood it now. They understood the implications of the ascension. Remember, they had spent 40 days with the risen Christ, and he'd been explaining to them what he was doing and why. So what did he explain to them, and what do we need to understand that will help us to appreciate the ascension and to have great worship for Christ and great joy in our hearts and to continually be praising and blessing God. Well, let me give you some thoughts. First of all, the ascension meant that his earthly work was finished. That's the first thing it meant. Back in verse 46, it said, it behooved Christ to suffer and rise from the dead the third day. So his work was done. John 17, 
He told the Father, I've finished the work thou gavest me to do. At the end of the redemptive work on the cross, what does he cry? To tell us that it is finished. So his work of redemption is done. The blood has been shed. The payment has been made and accepted. Uh, the debt was paid at the cross and the receipt was written at the empty tomb. And so they are rejoicing because his earthly work is finished. Not only that, the ascension meant that their earthly work was beginning. His earthly work was done, but his work continues through them. The book of Acts is the book of the continuing Christ, Christ working through his spirit-filled believers, through his church. So immediately after referencing his death, burial, and resurrection, it says in verse 47 of Luke 24, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem, and ye are witnesses of these things. It was the commencement. This was not the end. This was the beginning. This was, this was the starter's gun. This was the Lord saying, go to it, fellas. Everything I've prepared you for, everything I've put in you, now pass it on, share it. The ascension meant that his earthly work was finished and their earthly work was beginning. And then number three, the ascension meant that the Holy Spirit was coming. He says in verse 49, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. That power, of course, was in the person of the Holy Spirit. Now they understood. They had to wait in Jerusalem. Another comforter, just like Jesus, was coming to abide with them forever. The Father's promise. Oh, what a joy the Holy Spirit brings to our hearts. Praise God for the ascension. No wonder Jesus said, it's expedient for you that I go away. It's in your best interest that I leave because if I go away, I'll send the Holy Spirit to you. Our ascended Lord. His earthly work was finished. His, his, our earthly work was beginning. The Holy Spirit was coming. And then number four, the ascension meant that his heavenly work was continuing. Now hear me carefully. His earthly work is finished, but his heavenly work continues. What's his heavenly work? Well, the writer of Hebrews says that the high priest is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he ever liveth making intercession for us. Notice how he left them. The Bible says he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Think of this. The last time they saw Jesus, his hands were raised in blessing. I believe those hands are still raised in blessing. The last time they saw him, they saw nail-pierced hands lifted up to heaven. Who raised their hands in blessing? in the New Testament and in the Old Testament. The priest did. The high priest is taking his position now. Do you see how his heavenly work is going on for them? He's praying for them. That'll bring joy. And then one final truth today. His ascension not only meant that his earthly work was finished, that ours was beginning, that the Holy Spirit was coming, that his heavenly work was continuing, but the ascension meant that he was coming again. Did you hear the words of Acts 1? This same Jesus, in like manner, uh, in the clouds, in the air. Uh, that's how he's coming again. You see, the last miracle reminds us there's more to the story. The last miracle leaves us with this thought of Christ in glory because the next time you see him, friends, that's how he's coming. He's coming in glory. Oh, he was parted from them for a little while and carried up into heaven. But friends, he is coming Again, it leads us to think about the miracles that are yet to come, doesn't it? Uh, the, the final resurrection and the rapture of the church. Friends, we have a lot to look forward to. I want you to meditate today on our ascended Lord and just revel in it. Rejoice in it like those early disciples in. Worship God, have great joy, and continually praise and bless him for this great truth that from beginning to end, first and last, Alpha and Omega, Christ is enough. What an encouragement to know that regardless of the situation, we can trust the Lord Jesus. You can find a Bible reading schedule through the miracles of Jesus and many additional study resources at enjoyingthejourney.org. Visit us online today and let us know that you're listening. We are very grateful that you are making this journey with us through God's Word. Until next time, remember this, Christ is enough. Thank you.